I, I just had a few uh, questions because I know I know you're you're busy today. Um, uh, I did want to start by asking about what you're going to be speaking about today for the you know for those who, uh, who can't uh, be there for your keynote speech. You're, you're going to be giving a, a speech later today. So what what in general in broad terms will you be talking about? Um, you know the theme is personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. For us physicians, every uh, encounter is mm -hmm. a personalized. Uh, encounter of and we f we think that we are offering always personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. So I I thought that I would like to give uh, the view of an internist. So I am somebody who you will walk into uh, a clinic and see, and then I'll be taking care of you. Right. And I will be looking at every aspect. It's like I'm a, like a generalist. Y you're a board certified internal. Uh, medicine. Medicine doctor, yeah. Right. Exactly. And uh, with that, uh, many people do not understand what is personalized medicine. And mm -hmm. I thought if I can shed some light on it with uh, also the idea of showing the background, our landscape, Saudi Arabia, where we have a very, very high level of consanguinity, mm -hmm. which is 58%. It's the highest in the world. Right. And 60% uh, of it is to first degree relatives. I see. So we have our own issues mm. and most of the work on personalized medicine happened after uh, the um, human genome project uh, uh, came into fruition. And with that, you learned and you knew more about the association of disease with genes. So we have a lot of genetic disease. We have a lot of inherited modes in Saudi Arabia. Right. And I thought if I can show people that there is a value of investing in those aspects in genetic diseases, because most people think that what you should do is study about complex diseases, mm -hmm. which are the diabetes, the hypertension, because sure. they're the obvious, uh, what, you, what you look at now and you hear about all the time are these diseases. Yeah. I just wanted to blend them and show that they, they are all, like it's a spectrum, mm -hmm. and how I look at it as an internist, how I look at uh, what they have been up to and what's the newest thing mm -hmm. in uh, personalized medicine? Mm -hmm. Well, um, um, from your perspective, uh, and uh, you are at El Faisal University, I believe, right. in Riyadh. So um, what are the, the major personalized medicine pushes in the kingdom? What, what, what things? Y you spoke a little bit about uh, genetics um, and, and helping people identify yes. uh, perhaps um, uh, problems for, for uh, children and things. But what, what other places would personalized medicine um, sort of come up in, in uh, the kingdom in particular? Well, if you look at my institute, we mm -hmm. are uh, actually the number one. We have the number one college of medicine in Saudi Arabia. Wow. Uh, we have been ranked by Times Higher Education as number one in that aspect. We wow. are also number 43 in mm -hmm. uh, the young, inter by Times Higher Education young new universities right we're only we only opened in 2008 and we have a focus of uh, uh, business engineering health sciences uh, pharma mm -hmm. pharmacology and medicine college of medicine is our largest and uh, what we do is we want to make sure that people have a good well you know well-rounded uh, uh, experience right. so you are you understand what's happening in your uh, area and what's going on around you because it's all global now mm -hmm. so um, when we speak about what we have uh, you know what what we direct our students or they direct themselves at is like obesity Saudi Arabia has 34% yeah. of its population who are obese this yeah. affects diabetes affects this so it's in policy, and if you ask students, there was a study uh, from King Abdelaziz University a couple of years ago, and they asked all their top tier uh, f uh, senior medical students, mm -hmm. what do they know about personalized medicine? Do you know what that was? How many knew? They were 540 students. 
1.1% only new. If you compare it, wow. yeah, th- I mean the in-depth of, y- you know, right. knowing exactly what, what it is about. Mm-hmm. And if you look at a Czech, Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, and you see, you compare it with their students, 10% of their students knew. Okay. So uh, not many people are exposed or know what it is. So we insert it in our curriculum. We insert it in, in the experience of our patients, yeah. uh, of our students. Yeah. What, what led you um, personally uh, to pursue medicine? Oh, what else? It's lovely. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great experience. For me, uh, my grandfather on my mother's side, her father was a physician okay. and I always, you know, felt that um, everybody revered him and um, I thought uh, I also was um, always fond of knowledge. I always f- wanted to know more and I, I was fascinated by the yeah. human body. So every lecture I would go to th- during my medical training and, and studying mm-hmm. was just pure pleasure. Right. And I love helping people. Right. Um, and in terms of um, uh, actually implementing personalized medicine in the kingdom, what, what thoughts do you have on that? Like, how does that go from the realm of um, research or interest in a, a medical college into the wider public to benefit uh, people? These things n- require policy, actually, and mm. require resources diverted to where you think it is should should be. Uh, <coughs> this field, you you feel it in different aspects. So it is not like one thing you walk at and and uh, and you just get personalized medicine. What has enabled this mm-hmm. uh, is the technology. Okay. So there is a convergence. Uh, so many things are working together towards this point mm-hmm. where um, so just let uh, let me share two examples with you uh, a couple of days ago uh, there was this uh, item in news that uh, the VA hospital in, in the States conducted a te- um, uh, Gen- genetic testing on its uh, veterans mm-hmm. they took 200,000 now we are enabled by big data, by machine learning, by all applying all these methods that we have right. to extract the information that we need. Mm-hmm. They were looking at PTSD and depression in their um, community. They were able to do this and extract information about five genes that they thought that they are responsible or predispose people to having these issues because they had uh, collected the information on 800,000 veterans. Wow. Right? Yeah. So you, when you have the information, then you can, and, and the machine learning, you also have the wearables, sensors, mm-hmm. wearable sensors. So the other study that happened was uh, by uh, Stanford. It's uh, their um, uh, primary care 2.0. Uh, 2. Mm-hmm. They just did a study, pilot study, on 50 individuals you walk in and what they do is you see a team you get a blood test and they see what your genetics are what your susceptibility to which drug what would these drugs do to you mm-hmm. there is a registry now for us uh, for for like about a couple of hundred drugs and you see whether they work for you or they don't because 30 to 60 percent of drugs don't work right <laughs> right so um and they followed them for one year mm-hmm. This was very important because they were able to uh, adjust. So they put for them glucometers. So they were testing for their blood pressure, their blood sugar, and and they checked what their lifestyle was, and they had a life coach. And they were followed for a year. All that information kept on being fed into uh, their electronic medical records. So this is another enabler, your yeah. electronic medical record. And after a year, they were able to identify who from their patients. And these patients were from different ethnic backgrounds, total diverse, uh, Mm. all genders. And so they were able to identify women, five women were at high risk for breast cancer. I see. So they were able to tell them what to do and how to screen them more. Mm -hmm. A couple of patients, they needed to change their drugs. Mm -hmm. They had to adjust their... um, lipid lowering drugs they were not working for them actually they were poisoning them so 
all this information is so important because this is how uh, you go forward. Countries are moving towards that. In the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. there is the 100, the 100K project, which is <coughs> they collected, and it's finished now, they collected information from 100,000 people mm -hmm. who have rare diseases and cancers. And they took all the information, uh, genetic information regarding their uh, them and their families. Mm -hmm. There is also another one in uh, through the EU. There is international consortium right. through uh, the European Community Commission. So there is plenty going on around the world, but there's a big discrepancy. If you do not have your electronic medical record, if you do not have uh, a genetic re registry, genome registry for the diseases that you have, yeah. You cannot follow. You cannot know and, and identify what your uh, specific uh, issues are mm -hmm. for that um, uh, special uh, for that specific population. Right. Am I going too technical? No, no. That, that that's very interesting. And 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 often, right. The problem in clinical research is that making uh, assumptions based on population data is difficult to always drag straight down to the individual level. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like what you're saying is that. Uh, actually, those two things are, are converging quite well. So they, they did clinical research, but they were able to make specific recommendations for people, which is incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. And to your point about the, the, the tech, it, it requires these advances in tech. So do you think some of those things are, are here in the kingdom? Do you see a five or, or ten year sort of lead time for those things to come uh, to fruition here? Um. I am not privy to what the system is going to be like or mm. what's the policy about. But I do know that with our vision 2030, we are trying to be on the forefront. Right. There is chaos now here that has done this now. Yeah. So just giving this enri enrichment, winter enrichment uh, program geared towards personalized medicine mm -hmm. and having me speak, having Dr. Bandar Ganawi speak, mm -hmm. This is so important because you do need to shed the light. You do need to uh, educate the public right. because a very important component of personalized medicine is the participation of the patient, of the public. So it is not something that you are going to do <coughs> um, in an era where you are told. Right. You are part of the decision making. So when you are well informed, then you are going to guide your policy. There's something that now everybody is using and it is available. It's uh, direct to uh, user DNA testing. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing, so many companies have used that and, and for about a couple of hundred dollars, you will know your ancestry, you know what you're dis predisposed for. And people will come to me in my clinic and say, look, I have these tests, I have these results, what do I do with oh, them? Interesting. Yeah. So you ha in India, like where 62% of the population, they pay out of pocket for their health uh, needs. Mm. They are going, uh, you know, they have so many entrepreneurs there. I've met one of those. Um, actually, I didn't meet her, but I, I, I know her work. This lady created this company and it looked at uh, genetics of people, but it took it further, one step further, because there is a void and she took that place where the Ministry of Health is not like our Ministry of Health doing something about it or in, in certain other countries. Sure. So what she did was that genetic testing, she would take it and she would really actually guide you and she would take it more a step further where she would really go into which diseases and they will help you in, uh, in identifying your goals. And so it is not just like know my ancestry or I am related to this or I came from, I have, I'm, I'm like 1% African or whatever yeah. so she has done this and uh, this is going to raise more interest this is going to raise more uh, questions and I think it's only for the benefit of everyone of course right. it's fascinating mm. and we really appreciate your being here